the scope of what I worry about day to day is like, you know, is my car going to get me here? Am I going to do this? What time am I doing that? I have all these worries. But being up on that hall, the end of life, their focus, the people in those beds are very narrow. They're focused on how am I sitting with the big guy? And does my family know I love them? That's the only thing that matters anymore. And welcome back to the Joyful Catholic Leaders Show, where you'll hear stories and insights from those who lead with faith. From the seminary, to the parish, to the classroom, to the office, to the sports field, and everywhere in between. Now we're going to do something a little different with this month's episode. We're actually going to hear from four different seminarians from the St. Paul Seminary about their hands-on preparation for the priesthood today. Now there is no doubt the challenges facing a priest in 2022 are vastly different than they were 50, 25, 10, even five years ago. We could spend a lot more than half an hour talking about the cultural implications of a man in his 20s or 30s choosing a life of celibacy ministry and evangelization. But there's a relatively new emphasis in seminary formation on preparing men for the priesthood in the present societal context. Uh, This is from the Program for Priestly Formation, which was recently updated. It's basically the United States official guiding document for Catholic seminaries. Here's what it says. Christ instituted the ministerial priesthood to continue his work of salvation in the world. The ministerial priesthood renders tangible the actual work of Christ the head and gives witness to the fact that Christ has not separated himself from his church. Rather, he continues to vivify her through his everlasting priesthood. All priestly formation must have its foundation in adherence to the truths of faith about the nature and mission of the ministerial priesthood. Okay, so that's a little bit of, you know, Catholic document, magisterium, word salad, but it basically means priests must be Christ to others, both inside and outside the church. Every summer, seminarians at the St. Paul Seminary receive hands-on experience in living out this call. They spread out all over the Twin Cities and beyond in some cases, ministering to those who are sick and suffering. Some engage in hospital visits, others work with the poor, and others spend time at elder care facilities. Our first guest today is seminarian Ryan Schustacek. Ryan spent his summer at North Memorial Health Hospital in Robbinsdale, Minnesota, visiting with patients, some who, frankly, were approaching death, others who were there due to severe injury or illness. Ryan said the experience had as much of an impact on him as it did the folks to whom he was ministering. So I'm assigned at North Memorial Hospital. So I've been here since the start of June, and then we're going through the end of July. So hospital visits visiting patients, being a family. All the people here, if they're here more than four days, receive a visit, which is something really cool that North Memorial does. Um, So visiting Catholics, non-Catholics, everyone. But the real thing is to be the presence of Christ to them um, and also them to us. It's just so cool that like, as I've gone to visit each of these patients, a lot of times I leave, I think, having received more than I gave them. They just totally like, just let me into their life and shared and so the hospital visit itself though when I walk in a lot of times there's this you know nice exchange we laugh a lot a lot of times we there's a lot of joy um people especially who don't get visitors probably aren't laughing a lot in the hospital setting so it's great to be able to to laugh with them um but just to be invited into people's lives where they're at where they've been what brought them here that's super beautiful it's very holy ground and then a lot of times we, we close in prayer. Even if people aren't religious, um, we obviously we ask them, you know, would you, would you be all right if I said a prayer for you? And without fail, almost everyone says, yeah, I'd be happy if you prayed for me. And so kind of leaving them with that like aura of peace that the Lord brings, just inviting him into their room. As a priest, we're kind of the bridge between God and man. And it says in the Bible that God is love. And so being able to bring love into that room um, is just so powerful. It's so powerful. And what I think I've taken away is that we don't need to be healed so that we can experience love. That's part of it. But love itself, the experience of love is actually healing. Um, And even seeing the person, like there's physical ailments, but the way that the Lord can bring health 
physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, the whole person. Um, and as a priest, how that's going to be what we're, we're asked to do, is to kind of be that bridge. My mom's a hospice nurse, and so it was kind of like really fitting that I got assigned to the palliative care hall. So yeah. like, end of life. Yeah. So uh, getting very acquainted with death and like the uh -huh. families and it's like a very holy place to be, very sacred. Yeah. And just noticing like the scope of what I worry about day to day is like, you know, am, is my car going to get me here? Am I going to do this? What time am I doing that? I have all these worries. But being up on that hall, the end of life, their focus, the people in those beds are very narrow. They're focused on how am I sitting with the big guy? And does my family know I love them? Mm. That's the only thing that matters anymore. Mm. Everything else just kind of like fades away. And so it's been super like enriching for me to see that. Yeah. Like, wow, what is actually the priority? And those people are experiencing that. And a lot of times once they've kind of come to that place of, of peace with it, they're almost ready, you know? Like, where am I sitting with the Lord? Where am I sitting with my family? Are both of those in good standing? And that's what I get to bring is you know, a chaplain is kind of talking with people through that. But there was this gentleman um, who I went to go visit in the ICU. He just hadn't had a visit in a while, so I went and stopped by, saw him, he and his wife. And so we kind of tell you, said, you know, born and raised Catholic, but kind of fell away. And basically the gist of it was like, the faith, the faith is, how do you say? Religion is a great social construct. It really helps society, but I think, you know, the different gods that we believe, one's no better than the other, was kind of the gist of what he would say. And so I prayed with him and I left. Well, later that afternoon, he got like really tragic news, like you're not gonna make it probably more than another week. And so that night, actually, after I had visited him, he called the priest and was reconciled to the church, reconciled with God, I mean, he received the sacrament of anointing, and then later that week, I visited him again, you know, as he's saying his goodbyes and as he's like, he's this 50 year old guy who's going to die. So his mom and his wife were there and he was so at peace. Like before the sacraments, there wasn't that peace. But then afterwards, there was almost this like, he even shared with me, like my dad passed away a couple years ago and I'm excited to see him next week when I go to the next life. You know, it was like, wow something changed in him. And so for me to see like, wow, these sacraments, this isn't just like a, a routine or something we're doing, but this is actually changing people's hearts. And so that was beautiful. Seminarian Phil Conklin witnessed a different kind of suffering throughout his summer assignment. Phil and a handful of other seminarians worked at Peace House Community in Minneapolis, lending an ear and a friendly face to those who are homeless or in some cases living in government subsidized housing. Number one goal, Phil said, was learning to listen. We're in uh, Minneapolis. There's this house behind me called uh, Peace House Community. And it's, uh, it's this house that was built, well, the, the uh, Peace House is, I think, a couple decades old, but this particular house is about nine years old. This place is open five hours a day, uh, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 2.30. And it, it's a place where they, they serve breakfast in the morning for about an hour and then lunch for about an hour and a half. And uh, it's just kind of a place where people can come. It's mostly homeless ministry, homeless people, and uh, they just come and can get a meal, hang out. They call it Peace House because the whole idea is to get away from all the, the stuff that they have to deal with in their lives. And um, yeah, just kind of a place to, to feel more safe, be able to chat, listen, eat, sleep if they need to. Just, uh, just kind of a place to relax for a few hours if they want to come here. Primarily, we're here to listen. That's probably the biggest thing is we, there's a, the, inside the house, there's a big room, just one, one big room for the most part. Uh, there's a little hallway as well, but, uh, and then it's just like little tables and chairs. And then in the back, there's a little patio uh, and some more chairs out there. And we just kind of walk around, sit around, meet different people, talk to them. People are coming in, leaving all the time. And we're just there to listen and, uh, and uh, hear people's stories, you know, try to, you know, sometimes we'll ask our story and just get to know the people and see what, see what the, um, this type of ministry, these types of people, what type of lives they live and what stories they have and, you know, just their hopes and dreams and everything. It really teaches you to truly listen to people, uh, to, to get their side of the story. And also it helps you kind of to see 
to like really see more marginalized people. So if we're in a parish uh, and there's there's someone that there, there could be a person that most people maybe avoid and maybe that's the person I'll, I'll notice and go maybe talk to them, see their side of the story. And who knows what that could open up, you know, as far as the Lord's work and, uh, is concerned. Priests also have to be prepared to walk with those approaching death. Seminarian Nick Vance did this all summer long with his work at the Little Sisters of the Poor Holy Family Residence in St. Paul. We've been sent out to different locations all over the Twin Cities to encounter um, those of God's people who are in need of Jesus' healing love and presence. Um, me, myself, I'm here at the Holy Family Residence for the Little Sisters of the Poor, uh, right in the heart of downtown St. Paul. It's a Catholic elder care facility run by the Little Sisters of the Poor. For me, the experience in this program has been so eye-opening. I've had to encounter my own poverty of spirit um, as I meet people who are, who are suffering, meet people who are approaching their own death. Um, and it's been, for me, like, <laughs> I, I find myself asking that question too, like how do I come to terms with death? How do I um, encounter my own suffering? Um, and, and with it, like I mentioned, is, is this poverty of spirit. It's uh, at the end of the day, I don't have anything to offer these people except for my presence and the grace of God working through me. But with that, there have been so many amazing encounters through that to see um, someone's heart come alive, to see their, the, a brightness come back to their eyes when they have a moment of connection with another person. Um, for whatever reason, the Lord put me here this summer to have moments like that. Um, and I can truly say that encountering, um, encountering God's people in their suffering, in their loneliness, and being present with them is one of the greatest gifts that, um, that I could ever receive. You know, they, they call it ministry to the sick and suffering, but I honestly could say that the sick and suffering have ministered to me so much this summer. Seminarian Randy Skeet had a similar experience at Serenity Senior Care in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Something powerful I learned during the summertime, especially being at the nursing home, visiting the residents and the patients, was really recognizing people's hunger for communion and relationship, especially the last couple years after COVID lockdowns and more restrictions. The more we've been able to open up it was just recognizing how people are really hungering and thirsting to be seen and be met exactly where they are, especially in their suffering. And I think of a quote from Mark, Father Mark Toops, um, who says that uh, the opposite of fear is not courage, but the opposite of fear is communion. And so when we engage in that relationship with others, and in that person, that's where the Lord can really enter into that place and bring his healing and his presence. And so just to be a vessel of that this summer was a really wonderful privilege. There was one resident this summer that I, vet, I met almost every day. Uh, he is a very faithful Christian man, not Catholic, but just an amazing faith life. And he actually entered hospice care uh, the more that I was able to visit with him this summer. And a particular meeting with him, actually my first meeting with him, was him just sharing his story and he had asked for my story and what uh, brought me to the seminary and just my relationship with the Lord. And I found out that he was actually a trained spiritual director at one point in his life. But it's just very beautiful sitting and listening to him and just how he encountered the Lord, especially at a young age, and what prompted him to really follow him even during his work days and raising a family and he just met me with great compassion and openness and just really beautiful witnessing how the Lord was present to him even in the midst of his suffering and his slow decline this summer and a beautiful gift he has is he writes very beautiful poetry and so he had wanted me to read some of that to him uh, because he's blind and his uh, sight is declining and it was just a great gift to read how the Lord was touching his heart throughout the different stages of his life. So being invited into that by him was a really amazing experience. All right, so that's just a little insight into some of the preparation for priesthood that takes place outside the chapel and the classroom as part of seminary life. A big thanks to Ryan, Phil, Nick, and Randy, as well as North Memorial, Peace House, the Little Sisters of the Poor, and Serenity Senior Care. 
Also, shouts out to John Stockman and Hazel Jordan of the St. Paul Seminary Communications team. They recorded most of the sound you heard today. Most of all, thank you for joining us on this edition of the Joyful Catholic Leaders Show. Be sure to subscribe wherever you find your podcasts, and if you like what you heard, feel free to leave us a five-star review. You can also follow the St. Paul Seminary on the web, YouTube, and social media. Now, if there's a topic you'd like us to cover or a question you've got about the seminary, priesthood, or the faith in general, drop us a comment and you just might see it featured on a future episode. New pods drop every month on the first Friday of the month in honor of Our Lady of Fatima and the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. Thanks so much for listening and God bless. (laughs) 